All right, we are live. Thank you, everybody, for your patience, uh, for dealing with the, uh, the technical difficulties. Uh, we'd like to welcome you to night two of our virtual gospel meeting, uh, A House Not Made with Hands, here at the Agape Church of Christ. Um, and we'd like to continue to worship with you. Uh, I'd like to remind you, if you're visiting with us, uh, it is our honor and privilege to have you visiting with us uh, during this worship hour. And we will have a time where we'll formally get to know you just a little bit better. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to remind everybody on the Zoom call to please keep your mics on mute unless you are presiding over a certain area of tonight's meeting. And we'll go ahead and get started with our opening song. And I'll be back with our opening prayer. All right. I'm going to praise Jehovah. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, and his angels praise proclaim. All his hosts together praise him, sun and moon and stars on high. Praise him, O ye heaven of heavens, and ye floods above the sky and let them praises give jehovah for his name alone is high and his glory is exalted and his glory is exalted and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky May you all bow with me in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, our God, our Creator, it's once more again that we come before thee, Father, thanking you for another opportunity to participate in this gospel meeting. Father God, we thank you for your great love for us, Father. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for continuing to keep us on our way, Father God, and we thank you for just continuing to, to watch over us and keep us in a special way. Father, we pray that the things that are done and the things that are said this evening will uh, bring glory to your name, Father. And we pray for the man of the hour who will bring the bread of life unto us, Father God. May you bless him with wisdom and knowledge that he may bring back to remembrance those things that he has studied so diligently. And Father, may we continue to bless your holy name in an open fashion, Father God, that someone might be taught what they must do to be saved. May you bless everyone under the sound of my voice on this Zoom platform and also on Facebook Live. And may you be with us and guide us, Father. Continue to keep us. For it is in Christ Jesus' name we pray and ask all things. Amen. Amen. And I will lead uh, two songs. And after these two songs, we'll be led in scripture. And then we'll sing uh, the additional two songs after that. And we'll have the introduction of our minister. He's a wonderful savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus rescued me because he's a wonderful savior to me. And I was bound by fear, but Jesus set me free because he's a wonderful savior to me. Oh, and he's a wonderful savior to me. Yes, he's a wonderful savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful savior to me. And he's a friend so true, so patient and so kind, cause he's a wonderful savior to me. And everything I need in him I'll always find, cause he's a wonderful savior to me. Oh, and he's a wonderful savior to me. Yes, he's a wonderful savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in because he's a wonderful savior to me. And he is always near to 
comfort and to cheer, cause he's a wonder, oh Savior, to me. He, he forgives my sins, he dries my every tear, cause he's a wonder, oh Savior, to me. Yes, and he's a wonder, oh Savior, to me. Oh, and he's a wonder, oh Savior, to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. And dearer grows the love of Jesus day by day, cause he's a wonderful Savior to me. Sweeter is his grace while pressing on my way, cause he's a wonderful Savior to me. Oh, and he's a wonderful Savior to me. Oh, and he's a wonderful Savior to me. And I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. And I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. And I'm in the glory land way. And telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. Oh, and I'm in the glory land way. You know that I'm in the glory land way. And heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for. I'm in the glory land way. Just listen to the call, the gospel call today, and get in the glory land way. And wonders come home, oh, hasten to obey, and get in the glory land way. Oh, and I'm in the glory land way. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. You know that heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for. I'm in the glory land way. And the homeward I go rejoicing in his love. And I'm in the glory land way. And soon I shall see him in that home above. And I'm in the glory land way. You know that I'm in the glory land way. Yeah, I'm in the glory land way. You know that heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for. I'm in the glory land way. Tonight's scripture will come from John, the first chapter and verse 14. Again, that's John, the first chapter and verse 14. I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. I ask that you please read along silently as I read aloud. And it reads, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I read into your hearing John chapter 1, verse 14. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, and especially the doers of his holy word. May you bow with me in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, our God, our Creator, is once more again that I come before you, Father, thanking you for this avenue of prayer, thanking you for your infallible word, which is able to save our souls. Father, I ask that you open up our hearts and minds, that we all will be completely focused on you, Father God, and that the words that are brought will bring forth a great harvest for your kingdom. Father, I pray that we'll be completely focused on you and how we can continue to grow in our relationship with you. Please bless Brother Vern as he breaks unto us the bread of life. Continue to be with him and strengthen him. Give him strength and power, Father, 
that he will preach Christ and him crucified, that someone out there might be asking the question, what must I do to be saved? And that question will be answered. Continue to bless us and keep us, Father. For it is in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, in the, the Lord's kingdom, we have work to do, and we ought to be able to say, Lord, send me. There is much to do. There's work on every hand. Hark the cry of help come ringing through the land. And Jesus calls for reapers, and I must active be. What will thou, O master? Here am I, send me. Oh, here am I, oh, Lord, send me. Yes, here am I. I am ready at thy bidding. Lord, send me. There are the cries of morning souls distress, and the sigh of hearts who seek but find no rest. These should have my love and tender sympathy, ready at thy bidding. Lord, send me. Oh, here am I in all, oh, Lord, send me. Yes, here am I, I am ready at thy bidding, Lord, send me, and there are souls who linger on the brink of woe, Lord, I must and I cannot bear to let them go, let me go and tell them, brother, turn and flee, master, I would save them, here am I, send me, oh, here am I, in oh, Lord, send me, yes, here am I, I am ready at thy bidding, Lord, send me, yes, here am I, oh, Lord, send me, Yes, he am I, I am ready at thy bidding, Lord, in me. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eyes, and we'll follow till we die, because we will understand it better by and by, and singing by and by. Oh, when the morning comes, and that's when the heart all the saints of my God are gathering home, and we will tell the story how we overcome, and we will understand it better by and by. And we are often destitute of the thing that life demands, want of shelter and of food, thirsty hills and barren land, but we're trusting in the Lord, and according to his word, we will understand it better by and by, oh, singing by and by, oh, when the morning comes, and that's when all the saints of my God are gathering home, and we will tell the story. We how we overcome, and we will understand it better by and by. And temptations hidden snares often take us unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed for each thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, but we will understand it better by and by, oh, singing by and by, oh, when the morning comes, and that's when all the saints of my God are gathering home, and we will tell the story how we overcome, oh, and we will understand it better by and by.
Amen. Amen. So I've been uh, tasked with the duty and the honor of introducing our preacher for this evening, uh, Brother Vern Burrow. Um, I can remember as a young boy uh, watching the, the Ernest movies, and Ernest would always call people, and he would always say, you know what I mean, Vern? And I, and I would just, who is this Vern that he keeps talking about? Well, I finally met him. Uh, brother Vern Burrow, uh, strong Christian brother. Uh, he's uh, been married for 47 years, um, and he's a father of two, and he's been a Christian for over 45 years. He's currently serving as an elder at the Needville Congregation. Uh, he's been doing that in his service for 21 years. Um, he's retired from a uh, crane rental company, um, and he's preaching part-time and full-time. i uh, been doing that for about six years. And he definitely has a love for God, uh, definitely has a passion for what he does. Um, and so I, I invite you to uh, open your ears, open your Bibles, and open your minds, and, and get ready for a good word from the Lord from uh, um, Houston's very own Houston in the surrounding area, uh, <laughs> Brother Vern Burrow. After the song, uh, after the next song, the next voice you will hear is that of Brother Vern Burrow. Amen. Let the Spirit of the Lord let it rise among us and let the spirit of the lord let it rise among us and let the praises of the king rise among us let it rise and let the spirit of the lord let it rise among us and let the spirit of the lord and let it rise among us and let the praises of the king Rise among us, let it rise. And oh, oh, oh and oh, 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 let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord, and let the glory of the Lord, and let it rise among us, and let the glory of the Lord, and let it Rise among us and let the praises of our King rise among us and let it rise. And let the glory of the Lord and let it rise among us and let the glory of the Lord and let it rise among us and let the praises of our King rise among us and let it rise. And oh, 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 let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord and let the songs of the Lord and let it rise among us and let the songs of the Lord and let it rise among us and let the joy of the King rise among us and let it rise and oh 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 oh, 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 oh let it Okay, I think that's my cue. I hope everyone can hear me okay. I uh, appreciate the, the introduction there, uh, Marcus. Uh, and I, I have seen your picture and uh, I've seen you on uh, the Zoom many times. And I've wanted to meet you face to face and you keep uh, uh, not being around whenever I'm here and your other brothers are present. And I thought maybe you was a phantom there for a while. So you know what I mean? <laughs> There's no no question. I love I love the Lord. I love I love the, the Word of God. Uh, I appreciate Brother Freeman's lesson last night. Uh, it really uh, was fired up, and and I don't know that I've got the uh, the kindling in the uh, within me to do exactly what he did, but I appreciate uh, his uh, words last night of inspiration and encouragement. I uh, I'm kind of like uh, I, I can affiliate with. 
agape in their situation because uh, many, many years ago, we went to the University of Houston and, and we were a, a, a church without really a home there. And we, we uh, had a congregation on campus there for a number of years. And uh, U of H is kind of a transient uh, uh, commuter school and, and people are coming and going all the time. So it was kind of hard to carry on, but we, we were there a number of years and, and done a lot of good things. And originally come from McGregor Park Church of Christ, which uh, is an old Church of Christ there in Houston. And, and I know Belford Church of Christ, half the folks from uh, McGregor went to Belford and the other half went to uh, uh, start a congregation at the University of Houston. So I can kind of identify with, with Agape and, and the things that they're trying to do. And I so much appreciate them. I, the brothers that I've met there, I really respect them and, and what they're doing. And, and so thankful that they are, uh, have uh, blessed us with uh, coming over once a month and and really they're an encouragement to us and an inspiration and uh, we have uh, I, I, you know I got to know Richard a little bit he's he must like me because he's been kidding me quite a bit and uh, then uh, uh, Lakeisha she's just uh, you know she's really one of our members I don't know if she knows that or not but uh, you know we we have her parents here so <laughs> we take siblings <laughs> so Anyway, a little, little bit there. I am the father of two grown uh, children. I have a, uh, a grown daughter that lives about 300 yards from me, and uh, she has three princesses, and I get to see them uh, quite often, and they are, uh, you know, don't let this gray hair fool you. I, I, you know, I know uh, I look old, but really I'm not. You know, it, it's, uh, it's uh, the tint that I have on my hair right now. My son is in Abilene. He's uh, married, been married for a number of years, and got uh, uh, two instant and two regular. He married a young widow at a young age, and they had two two children came with her, and uh, I, they're my grandkids. And uh, so I'm a, also a great grandfather. So Amen. you know, I, <laughs> I ought to be able to say something. I don't know that I, I'll say anything tonight that would be uh, so outstanding. But I'm kind of a simple guy. Uh, I, I believe the Bible is God's word. I, I believe that, and the more I look into God's perfect word. To me, the word of God is like treasure. The more you look, the more you dig, the, the more alive the word of God comes. And the more that it, uh, I'm, I'm fixed on uh, the idea that, that God's word is completely true. And I'm fixed on Jesus as my savior. I believe the Holy Spirit is uh, alive. And I believe that God is everywhere. I believe he's still working in his church. And I believe that even in this pandemic, that we, the church, need to continue to do the things we are supposed to do to the best of our abilities. And that, that's, that are in is the challenge. So uh, I, love, I love the gospels. Uh, I really, I love the uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I love uh, Matthew five, six, and seven, because I think that's the paramount scriptures for the entire New Testament. That's my own personal feeling. I think everything else kind of stems from that, of Jesus' words. And that's why I like the, uh, the gospels. I prefer John, the Gospel of John. I just kind of like John because he has a lot of love get, to give, and I really like that in, in the situation there. So I, I thought about the lesson here, and I've been uh, looking at it for several weeks and kind of preaching around it uh, for a couple of weeks here, and, and I went off on a little bit different area over there. You may think it may be a little bit different, but the, the idea is that uh, the theme is a house uh, not made with hands. And as I thought about that, I thought, well, what makes up this house not made with hands? And, and I went to John there in the first chapter of John, the very first verse says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. How amazing is that? And then you go down in verse 14 that Brother Marcus just read for me. And it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have beheld its glory, glory, the only son, the only begotten son from the father, full of grace and truth. What a power-packed scripture that is that tells us about Jesus, that tells us who Jesus is. God in the flesh walking here on the earth. What an amazing thing that the word became flesh. Then John says it dwelt among us. That word dwelt is the same word as, as tabernacle. Uh, in the Old Testament, Moses, you know, made the tabernacle exactly uh, to the pattern that God had told him to. And, and they, they would move whenever the tabernacle, whenever the, the, the cloud was over the tabernacle and it lifted, then they would move. So that was paramount to the uh, Israel uh, being able to go through the wilderness 
was tabernacling, so to speak, with God, tabernacle or tent, same thing that, and here it says the word became flesh and it lived among us. It dwelt among us. John can say that and we can believe that because he says that, that they were eyewitnesses. We know that no man has ever seen God. That's what God's word says in verse 18 of the same chapter of, of John. No one has ever seen God. The only God, the only begotten in the Father's bosom is at his right-hand side. And it says something there in the rest of that verse. It says that Jesus has made him known. You see, the more we look at Jesus, the more we can see God. The more I know about Jesus, the more I'm going to know about God. When I look at Jesus and I see the things that Jesus did, the people he encountered and the situations that he was in, I get encouraged because I can get a better picture of God. And I like that picture. And I love the picture that Jesus paints. I love that, that he is the one. The word became flesh. It tabernacled with us. You know, Matthew 123, whenever uh, the angel in a dream had went to Joseph and said, no, it's okay to go ahead and take Mary. And he quoted him uh, uh, one of the uh, from the prophet that said uh, in Matthew 123, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isn't that amazing that we have that written for us that he and John here says we have seen his glory. What did John mean by we have seen his glory? That meant that they have witnessed the things that brought glory to God through Jesus' actions, the miracles that he did, and the healings that he did, the lessons he taught. You see, Jesus went about, in Matthew 4, uh, 4 23 says, he went about teaching, preaching, and healing. That's a pretty good message for the church today, isn't it? Go about teaching. You know, people have to be taught because I'm telling you, there are, there are folks today that it, this is strange to their ears. They don't, they have no idea about the God in heaven. They have no idea about their savior. And I, I'm telling you folks, it, it's, it's rampant. I was amazed uh, during the Olympics. There was one commercial uh, uh, from, uh, I believe his name was Ron Reagan and, and he was with Freedom Coalition. And he said, I'm an atheist and I'm proud. I'm proud to not, uh, not honor God. And he said, I'm not afraid of hell. I couldn't believe I was hearing what I was hearing on the airwaves. But I'm telling you, he's probably not alone of people thinking out there like that. So we all have a job to do, no matter how, how small you think you are and how, how you think I, it's not going to make a difference. I have a saying, when Christians are put in the mix, if you are a Christian and you're the only one in that mix, you can make a difference because you have something inside of you that's not in the world. Greater, First John 4, 4 says, greater what's in you than what's in the world. We need to stand on that. He dwelt among us. We've seen his glory. One of the first recorded miracles, you probably know this. I know most of you are Bible scholars. So, uh, you know, the first miracle we have recorded for us is, is Jesus turning water into wine. How, how, how appropriate is that? That, you know, he, he listened to his mother there that, that they'd run out of wine. And I'm told from some of the scholars that this was kind of a sign of, of Israel there, that they were fading away. And Jesus, at just the right time, comes on the scene there and he, he turns the water into wine and he manifests the greatness of God and the power that he did. The resurrection of Lazarus in John 11, verse, verses four and verse 40 there. In verse 40, Jesus is talking to Martha and he reminds her, he says, if you believe, if you believe, you, you will see the glory of God. And we know that she did, didn't she? Jesus spoke Lazarus' name and Lazarus came out of the grave. Amen to that. So, and then the glory that they witnessed, the things that they saw, the transfiguration, how, how wonderful was that? Jesus, as you know, had 12 apostles, but there were three that were very special to Jesus. And, and his three inner circle there, Peter, James, and John, and they, they went up on the holy mountain with Jesus and they beheld his glory there as he, he spoke to Moses and Elijah. And then when they looked at him closer, they, they said, Jesus, his face was as like the sun. You can't see the sun, can you? Not very long, can you? And live and your eyes be blinded. And his, his clothes were white as, as light. And then they heard the voice from heaven. You see, we can believe God's word. There's many, too many witnesses. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 15 tells us that there were over 500 witnesses at one time. 
How amazing is that? 500 people are not going to get it wrong, are they? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. So they witnessed all of this. And Peter confirms that in 2 Peter verse 1, uh, uh, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 16. 2 Peter 1, verse 16 says, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty and we heard the voice from heaven when they were on the holy hill, they, at the holy mount, they heard the voice from heaven. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. How much plainer can it be that God spoke it and we have it recorded for us. So church, who do we need to listen to? We need to listen to Jesus because John also tells us that the words that he has he got them from the father and the words he spoke is exactly what the father told him to say and how to say it. How amazing is that? We serve a God like that. We have a, a savior like Jesus. And he's the only, the verse there says the only, he's the only son of God. He's our only savior. There's not another savior coming. There's not, there's, he is the one and only son of God that did what he did beheld the glory and, and everything that was constituted in that verse were becoming flesh dwelling among us so we have seen his glory the only one from the father many places throughout the new testament one of the favorite scriptures of course is john three sixteen, where god sent jesus to save the world not to condemn the world but to save the world mm -hmm. we need to remember that church yeah. we're not in the business of condemning that is not our job. Amen. We're not in the job of judging either. That's not our job. Our job is to plant the seed. And, and God gives the growth. We just need to be seed planters, don't we? Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and, and use the talents we have, whether it's like the five-talent man or the two-talent man. And don't be like the one-talent man. No, we don't want to be like him. All of us have different gifts. I was telling this to a, uh, one of my uh, brothers the other night. You know, there's some things I can do very well. There's some things I can't do. I'm not much of an IT person, so I depend on, on Brother Small and, and my wife for sure when I'm home because I, I just, uh, I'm kind of like a, a little tantrum kid. I, I scream and scratch the whole way. I don't want to go. You know, I don't want to learn all that, the new stuff. I don't want to do that. But all of us have talents. Whatever your talent is, church, we need to use it for God's glory to the best of our abilities. You know, there, there's, there's, there's so many things that you can do that, that uh, shows that you are a Christian. And, and one of those paramount things is, is loving one another. Church, we need to love one another. You recall John, uh, Jesus' great prayer in John 17? Uh, what did he pray for primarily? He prayed for unity, did he not? Unity. And sometimes... We need to read John 17 again. He didn't just pray for his, his disciples, his apostles, did he? No, he pray, actually prayed for us, those that would believe through his message. How amazing is that that so long ago, more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus, God's son, prayed for you and me. How, how wonderful is that, that we have the Savior of the world that prayed for us so long ago? That, to me, is just, it's just wonderful. In John, in Matthew 16, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, one of our favorite verses is, is, is verse 18. And it tells us there that Jesus tells uh, what church he's going to build, doesn't it? It says, I will build my church. I will build my church. Before that, he, he had asked, who do people say that I am? Yeah, yeah. Who do people say that I am? Well, some say Elijah, some say John the Baptist or Elijah. Or Jeremiah or one of the prophets was the answer that was given Jesus. And then I can almost see that proverbial finger coming out and pointing it just at uh, random at all of them and saying, but who do you say that I am? Church, who do you say Jesus is? Who do you say Jesus is by the way that you live? You see, we're Christians 24, 7, 3, 6, 5. We got to get an amen there. Come on now. Come on. I know my skin tone's a little little light, but I, I still like amens. And I like to know, I, yeah, raise your hand. I don't care. You know, holler, I don't care. You know, don't go too crazy. But anyway, <laughs> it, it's, uh, you know, we need we need to be about the Father's business. And 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 when we're not, you know, the, the wagon is going to move and it's going to get pulled. And the more people we have pulling the wagon, the better it is, right? 
Yeah, the easier the load is. In fact, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But Jesus said, I'll build my church. It's not my church. It's Jesus' church. We can. We got a good name out front. It's the church of Christ. That's whose church it is. He's the one that purchased it. It's his body. It's his assembly. Ecclesia, that's his assembly, his congregation. And it would be, you know, I, I thought, well, what does this assembly look like? It's a community of believers. Believers that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, that have changed, they, they, they've made an about face of living for the world, and now they want to live for God. And, and sometimes that's a daily struggle, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. You know, I'm not looking at anybody that I would consider perfect out there. I've seen some good brothers out there, but like me, we all have issues from time to time. That's why we need Jesus. You know, if we could live a perfect life, we wouldn't need Jesus, but that's not the case. We need Jesus. We need that continual cleansing. I know I do. And I, I know there's a world out there that sometimes doesn't even realize it. You know, the devil is so busy, isn't he? Isn't he busy? You know, and, and he's blinding the eyes of unbelievers so they can't see the glory of the Father and the face of Jesus. Amen to that. Come on. So this community, this called out community, you know, to be different. It's called the church. Yeah. People of faith. That faith comes from what? We know that, don't we? Yeah, we can read Romans chapter 10. Faith comes from what? It comes from hearing the message. And that message is heard through the word of Christ. And we have it again, that word of Christ. Jesus' teachings are, are so, so important. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, that to love one another, to, to uh, do to others as you would have them do to you. You know what Jesus says about that? He says that sums up. He says that sums up the law and the prophets. Wow. Loving one another, putting, putting someone else first. Have you done that lately, church? Have you put someone else's needs in front of yours? That's not always easy to do, is it? No, we're all busy. We all got something to do. Just like the, 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 the priest that passed the, uh, the man that was beat up on the side of the road. You can read about that in Luke 18 there. The, the, the Good Samaritan story we, we have in the Bible for us. The, the priest, the Levi, passed him. And here comes an old lowly Samaritan. <laughs> and he's the one that rescued this man. We need to learn. We need to learn from God's word what we need to be about. And I think sometimes it, sometimes we make it too difficult. We make it more harder than it is. that We have a lost world out there that's crying out for help. Our families, our families are are tormented by the devil. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I know there's some people there, uh, uh, Carolyn Brown from Detroit, that Houston now, Houston now is, I, I think they're ranking almost number one in, in deaths, you know, from uh, violence and things like that. It's, it's crazy, you know. And, and so what, my opinion, the only thing that's going to cure that is, is, is Jesus, yeah. you know. And, yeah. and we need to start. We need to start in our own backyard sometimes. Yeah, we need to start with our own families. God bless the Christian families. God bless those that, that carry on that message and raise Christian children. Because that's not easy to do, is it? No, it's not easy to do. There's, as, as my brother Jackie would say, there's lots of shiny things out there, isn't there? Yeah, that, that get our attention. They do, you know, uh, and we know what that is. You know, whatever your, your button is there, you think, you think Satan doesn't know what your button is? Oh, you may have more than one like me that I have to be careful there. And, and, and I know there's certain things there. I don't want to go down that road because I know what's over the hill and it's not going to be good. The bridge is out. <laughs> you have to be careful, don't we? Yeah. So another important thing there, we're studying Galatians on Wednesday night. We have a, almost a professor that's teaching our Wednesday night uh, Galatians class there. Maybe I'm exaggerating just a little bit. It's brother small just a little bit but anyway and, and Galatians chapter 6 we hadn't really got there yet but in verse 2 I don't know if we are going to get there but we, well, we might in Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 Jesus or Paul tells the church there he says carry one another's burdens or bear 
one another's burdens. How are you going to do that if you never, you never fellowship? Oh, that's that's not good, is it? No, we're supposed to help one another. And he says when we do that, Paul says you fulfill the law of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's that word and important thing again. When we and we can do that, can't we? We have a dear a dear brother right now that's on the brink of of going on to his reward. And we have, we, you know, we're all kind of on, on pins and needles because we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but we don't, we don't think it's going to turn out necessarily uh, where it feels good. So what do we need to do as a church family? We need to bear his burden, don't we? We need to take part of that pain and part of the body. Jesus describes the church like a body. If I pinch your finger, would you have to, would you have to ask me what, what's going on there? Your brain would instantly say, I have a pain. And I know exactly where that pain's at. That's the way the body should be. When one's joyful, we should all be joyful. Yeah. We should, and to, to pick up one another and to help one another, not build a, bri a, a wall, but build a bridge, right? Yeah. Absolutely, we need to build a bridge, uh, you know, <laughs> especially this day and time. So, <sighs> fulfills the law of Christ. You know, I've read, I've read Matthew 25, where Jesus, with the holy angels go and they separate, you, you've read it probably, separate and they put the goats on one side and the sheep on another. Isn't it amazing there when you look at that, that narrative, what Jesus says that they did? It wasn't, you know, being able to conjugate a Greek text correctly or a Hebrew, uh, you know, or Aramaic. It wasn't necessarily that. No, he didn't say that. What did he say? He said, you, you visited me, you know, when I'm sick, or when, I, when, when I'm in prison, you came and visited me. I, I was naked and you clothed me. I, I was hungry and you fed me, you know? And they said, when did we do that? You know what, you know what Jesus said? When you did it to the least yeah. of these, my brothers, yeah. do you rub shoulders with any of the least of these? I do. I do. I'm not. I'm not bragging. It's it's <laughs> it's everywhere, folks. Yeah. There's lots of least of these out there. Don't take the attitude somebody else needs to do it. Remember what I said? You may be the only one there in that mix. You may be the only one that shows Jesus, that shows God to the that group. Maybe it's in your office. Maybe it's in your shop. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's at the water cooler. I don't know. But someone is watching you. I promise you, someone is watching you. If you're a parent, I don't have to tell you who's watching you. If you're a grandparent, and you know what? I'm proud to be a grandparent and I'm convinced there's a necessary uh, fulfillment that grandparents fulfill. Can I get an amen? Come on, Herman, give me an amen. Yeah, we have a job to do. Those, those parents need a little, little help every now and then, don't they? Yeah, they do. And, and, and we've been down the road a little bit further sometimes, so we ought to know a couple of other things, you know, there. But grandparents are a necessity. They're part of the family unit. And I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I'm just telling you that, you know, I come from a broken family. My mother and dad divorced uh, when I was about 12 years old, 11 or 12. I know what it's like. There were six of us, busted up family. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like. <laughs> I know what it's like to, to, to not have things. I do know that, you know. But I know one thing. When I became a Christian, I realized I am an important person. You know why I'm important? Because I'm made in the image of God. Yeah. And that's why I'm important. It's not anything that I've done. And I, I realized when I saw that and I read that in these precious words that are so easily available to us today, I read them and I saw that God loves me. And as a Christian, I, as a young person, I never wanted to be alone. Do you like to be alone? If you're a Christian, you're never alone. You're never alone. You've got God right there with you. You've got Jesus. His spirit is living in you. Right? Yeah, if you've been baptized, it says we have received a gift. 
a gift from God, the gift of the Holy Spirit. How amazing is that? So I'm not sure about my time here, but anyway, uh, the reason we serve, you want to know why we serve? Because the master served. Jesus said, I didn't come to, to be served. I come to serve in Matthew 20, 28. I come to not be served, but to serve. If Jesus served, and we can see some, some pictures there. Of, remember who Jesus is. He shows us exactly who God is. It's amazing to me that when I look at Jesus and I see him washing feet in John 13, I, you know, I use, I think about that a lot. Washing a feet, that was the job of, of really the lowest slave, really, you know, and Jesus when he got through, he said, you know, you know, I've given you an example. Verse 15, he says, I've given you an example that you should go and do as I have done to you. He says, when you do that, you're going to be blessed. I've given you an example. He tells us uh, the, 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 that chapter has got two other great verses in it. And the reason they are is because what Jesus said in, in, in John 13, 34, he said that you are to love one another. He says, I'm going to give you a new command. You love one another as I have loved you. Yeah. You get that? You love like Jesus. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus do? He laid down his life. Mm -hmm. We're told to lay down our lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even for the least of these. Wow. So, and he says something there just as important in the next verse. Verse 35 of John chapter 13. He says, when you do that, you prove that you are my disciples. Wow. We, we have some proof there, don't we? Yeah. And, and doing, uh, we know that it's nice to hear. James would say that. It's good to be a, a hearer, but it's better to be a doer. Be, don't just be a hearer. You be a hearer and a doer. If we know the right thing to do, we'd be blessed if we do that, is what God's word tells us. And we demonstrate our love. One of the ways, one of the important ways we demonstrate our love is being obedience to Jesus Christ, be on obedience to his teachings. Remember what John, uh, Matthew 4.23 said? He went about teaching, preaching, and healing. Teaching. It's important. All of us were taught the way to, of God. They didn't come automatically. If it did, it, it might not be quite worth as much. I, I'm not stepping on any toes. I'm just telling you how how I read the scripture here. I think I think it cost Jesus quite a bit. I think it cost God quite a bit to send his one and only son to die in my stead. Paul would tell the Romans, even when we were sinners. That's amazing to me. This back to this idea of, of the house that's built with hands. Jesus gives us a great, a great story in, in Matthew chapter seven. He tells us about these two houses that were built. And he says, the ones that hear my words, he puts them into practice, be like a wise man. What did he build his house on? He built his house on the rock. And the winds, the winds came in church. Are the winds blowing today? The winds are blowing. Is the rain beating against that house? Yes, the rains are beating against the house, but did it, it didn't crumble, did it? No, because it was founded where? It founded on the rock. And that foundation, Paul tells the Corinthian church that there's no other foundation which can be laid other than what's already been laid, which is Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 3.11. No other foundation. That tells me there's not another gospel. That tells me there's not another savior. That tells me that what we have is accurate. We have nothing else coming down the line. We can turn over to the last book in the Bible and we can see who wins the race. Christians are the winners. I want to be on the winning side, don't you? I want to get that crown, that unfading crown, not that one that's got the, the leaves and everything on it. It fades away. I want that crown that doesn't fade. I want to make sure my name is written in that book. And we are we we learn what we have. We are taught. Paul would tell the, the Ephesian church in chapter two, 
verse 19, that we are members, if you're a Christian, you're members of God's household, fellow citizens with the saints, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And who's the cornerstone? Who's that solid rock with Jesus Christ being the cornerstone? There's Jesus again. Everything stems out from Jesus. That's what we have. Because God got his, he got his teaching. He spoke exactly what? He spoke exactly what God told him to say. What did Jesus share with his apostles, his inner circle? He shared that same word. What same word do we have today? It's exactly the same thing we have recorded for us. Because Paul here taught that, that we are on that foundation. That foundation from the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ being the cornerstone there. And it says in him, in whom the whole structure, the whole structure being joined together. That sounds like a church to me. It sounds like we need to be together to me. It says they join together and rise and grows into what? Grows into a holy temple to the Lord. Yes. Wow. I, I, I can kind of get a picture of that. Peter would say in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse, verse 4, he says, as you come to him, that living stone, that living stone rejected by men. And I looked at that word rejected, and the idea of rejected there is they've examined and they've looked at it, and they said, I don't want this. They disapproved it. Put it over in the, the disapproved pile. That's what that word rejected means. And we know that's what happened to Jesus when he went to the, the religious folks, the scribes and the Pharisees, not all of them. We know that. There were a lot of priests that, that came to the Lord. There were some Sadducees and, and, and Pharisees that came to the Lord from the Sanhedrin. We know that. But for the most part, they rejected Jesus. He went in the disapproval file. But to God, look what, look what the word there, Peter, who was one of the inner circle. Remember, he's one of the eyewitnesses. It says, but to God and God's sight, he was chosen. And what's the other word there? He was precious to him. He is a precious living stone. And I thought about that idea of a precious stone. Have you thought about any precious stones? What does man call precious stones? You know what I'm talking about. Some of you ladies know what. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about. That's them diamonds and, and, and rubies and, and uh, you know, pearls and things like that. We call, Man calls those what? Man calls those precious stones. That's what man calls those. What does God call precious? He calls, Peter says that to God in God's sight, he is chosen and he's that precious, precious stone. And it says in him, you are being built into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, agape. You hear that? Yeah, you're being built in there to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. You see, we can't just bring anything to God. Yeah. No. No, we can, but it might be rejected. You see, all the sacrifices, you couldn't bring a, a, an unspotted animal, an animal that was had some problems. You couldn't, you couldn't, couldn't bring that and offer that as a, as a good sacrifice to God. It was unacceptable. We have to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. We come through Jesus Christ. He's the one that's at the right hand of the Father. He's the one that went to the cross. He's the one that carried his own blood, not the blood of bulls and goats. He carried his own blood to the Holy of Holies, the heaven Holy of Holies, the throne of God, the mercy seat of God. And he intercedes today. He still intercedes for his people, the Christians. You see, that's who, that's interceding. That's the one interceding for you and me as Christians is Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's our priest. He's the one that's in charge of this temple. In fact, Paul would tell the Corinthians, you are that temple. Wow. God's temple dwells in you. God's spirit dwells in you. In verse 17 of 1 Corinthians 3 says, you are that temple. Have to be in Jesus, folks. You've got to be in Jesus. You can't, you can't live how you want to live. That's not the people of God. We live in obedience to the call of God. And that call comes through the form of the gospel, the good news that someone else has already paid the price. 
This world needs some good news, doesn't it? Yeah, we need Jesus. We need Jesus. Yeah. Coming to him. Tell him, I don't want to live for the world anymore. I know where it's going to go to, but that world, it's not good. There's an end that's not good. I want to live for in Jesus camp. I want to live in, in that. I want to live with, with Jesus as being the commander, in other words. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The way you do that is you, you are taught the word. You honor God. You, you change your ways, just like what Peter told the first gospel sermon he preached. Repent, all of you. Confess Jesus, confess the name. And you have to be cleaned up. You see, in front of the temple there, there were these great vast uh, vats of water because you couldn't come in the temple there. You couldn't come with dirty, dirty clothes. You couldn't come in there. You had to be cleaned up. We can't come to God on fil with filthy rags. We, we come to God, we have to be cleaned up. Where we're cleaned up, we're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Ephesians 1, 1, 7 says, uh, in him we have redemption yeah. bought back the forgiveness of sins. See, that's what separates us from God. It's what Isaiah says, Isaiah 59 to you. Man, your sins have separated you from God. There's only one sin cure, and that's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Whatever your need is, I hope that you'll make it known to this website. And I know there's brothers out there. If there's something that we can help you with, please let it be known. Thank you for your attendance. Just as I am without one plea, but that Father love was shed for me, and that Thou bidst me come to Thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, and just as I am, am waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot or land of God I come, I come. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Vern, for that word on this evening. Laid some heavy stuff on us, man uh <laughs> that's some that's some heavy stuff when you think about fulfilling the law of christ and the things that you have to do in order to fulfill the law of christ he said um all the law and the prophets hang on that one thing uh and that's love god and love your fellow man and so uh, we have some work to do, uh, as, as Brother Richard uh, sang earlier. There's work to do. There's work on every hand. Um, and so we all have to get busy about the Lord's business. So at this time, uh, we'll take any prayer requests uh, that you may have. I uh, see we have one uh, that's come through on the uh, Zoom chat um, and also one on Facebook Live. Uh, I'll make mention of that prayer request, and uh, we'll take those prayer requests before God's throne. And so uh, the first prayer request we have is from uh, Sister Angela Freeman. Uh, she is uh, asking our prayers on behalf of Velda Taylor, who has uh, been her best friend for over 50 years. Uh, she's scheduled to have a heart stint inserted this week. Uh, so we would please pray for a successful procedure without complications or surprises. And also, uh, we want to pray for um, a complete recovery because she's expecting to become a grandmother any day, and she wants to be able to help her daughter bring her baby into the world. So we will definitely pray 
on behalf of uh, Melda Taylor um, and the, uh, the uh, procedure that she is scheduled to have. Um, uh, Brother Eric, Eric Tyrone Smith, uh, do you have a prayer request? Yeah, um, my daughter is going back to South Carolina tomorrow. I pray for her traveling grace and also, too, she's still going through uh, the grieving process of the loss of her daughter. So be with her and be with the family also. All right, so the daughter is traveling back to South Carolina. And what was the second part? Um, the grieving process, she still hasn't got over it. She went to her grave today. And so she, her daughter was 33. She had a heart attack. So she just pray for the family as a whole. Okay, praying for the family as a whole. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, sir. No problem. No problem. And, and Brother Marcus, if you will, as always, continue to lift us up here at Agape, the work that we are pursuing, that God will continue to direct us, and that we will have discerning spirits to follow that direction and stay on the path that he has for us as we seek to expand the borders of his kingdom right here in Fresno. Yes, indeed. Uh, praying always to stay in God's will as we continue to, to do his work. And, and expand the kingdom here in Fresno. All right, I think that is all. Um, and y'all keep me honest, if there's any that I missed, uh, please let me know. I don't see any that I missed. Uh, so we'll jump over here to uh, Facebook Live. Um, Facebook Live, we do have one prayer request. Um, it comes from Richard Edwards. Um, he's asking for prayer um, for his wife who has just become incarcerated um, and also for his family, uh, his two sons and his daughter um, that he's taking care of. So we'll pray on behalf of um, his family at this time. And he's also had some left some contact information here so we will definitely contact him uh, and see if there's anything that we can do um, to help lighten his load and, and bear that burden. All right. If you uh, any other prayer requests before we go before God's throne. All right. If you wouldn't mind, join your hearts with mine as we go before God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, our God, our Creator. It's once more again that we come before thee, Father, thanking you for this avenue of prayer, Father, that you've given us to communicate directly with you, Father God. Father, we thank you for Brother Vern and the word that he shared on this evening, Father. We pray that it fell on good ground, on good soil, Father, that we will again be revived to continue to do your good will, Father God, and your good pleasure, and that we will bring glory and honor to your name uh, through the, the way that we develop our relationship with you and the way that we develop our relationships with others, Father God. Father, we pray that you'll be with us and strengthen us, Father God, that we'll live a life that is uh, going to give you glory, Father, because we know that for some people, we're the only Bible that some folks may read. And we just thank you for the opportunity to be the examples that you would have us to be, Father God, always patterning ourselves after our elder brother, Jesus Christ. Father, this time we come before you lifting up in prayer, uh, Sister Angela Freeman's friend, um, Velda Taylor, who's scheduled to have a heart stent put in tomorrow, Father. We just ask that you, or this week, rather, we ask that you continue to, to be with her, Father, as she goes through this procedure. Give her the strength, Father God, uh, that she needs and give the uh, those who will be attending to her the strength and the know-how that they need, Father God, to do the things that they need to do, Father, that she will have a successful surgery. And Father, we ask that you be with her as she recovers, Father. Give her a full recovery, Father God, that, that she'll be able to see her grandchild born into this world, Father God. We pray that you'll continue to bless her and her family and continue to, to be their rock, Father. Continue to be their strength, Father God. 
Father, we come before you also on behalf of Brother Eric Smith, who's uh, submitted a prayer request on behalf of his daughter, who's traveling back to South Carolina. Father, we ask you, please give her traveling grace at this time, Father, and, and give her grace to, to reach her destination safely, Father God. Father, we also pray for the family who's going through a tough time right now, Father. We pray that you give them strength that they'll be able to continue to move forward, Father God. We pray that you'll uh, be with Brother Eric and strengthen him, Father, that he will continue to be a pillar for his family and that he will continue to live a life that, that pleases you and that he'll continue to be the example that you would have him to be. Father, we also pray on behalf of the, the saints and the work that's here at Agape, Father, we just ask that you continue to watch over us and keep us, Father, that we continue to stay in step with your word, Father God, and your will. Father, we just ask that you continue to bless our path, Father God, and continue to be with us, that we'll continue to walk in step with your will and with your word, Father. And may you continue to lead us and keep us, Father. Give us a spirit of discernment that we'll be able to continue to move forward in the way that you would have us to move forward. Father, we also pray on behalf of Richard Edwards, who's asking for uh, prayer on behalf of his family, uh, who's going through some difficult times at this time, Father. Bless his wife and continue to, to be with her and guide her, Father God. Keep her protected. And Father, be with his children, Father, that, that they will continue to move forward, Father. And also be with the bodies of Christ, Father, that we'll be able to provide the needed assistance, Father God, for this situation. And we pray that you get all the glory and all the honor. Father, we last but not least want to continue to pray for this gospel meeting. Pray that this meeting continues to touch others, Father God, and it continues to touch those who it needs to touch. And we pray that those who have an earnest heart for you will hear what they must do to be saved, Father, and that they will respond and that they will be saved, Father God. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for continuing to be with us and watching over us. These and all blessings we ask in Christ Jesus' name we pray and ask all things. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So uh, two nights in and, and we are full. <laughs> and we're gonna gonna get even fuller. Uh, my mom is listening. She she was an English teacher for a long time, so she's probably cringing that I said the word fuller. Um, so I'm sorry, Mama. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna apologize <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> don't have much for you all in the way of announcements this evening, um, but I do want to uh, acknowledge our visitors and our guests. Um, Thank you for, for spending this time with us um, and for uh, attending our gospel meeting. Um, if you're watching us for the first time on Facebook Live, um, these are our normal worship times on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Uh, we also Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. and also Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. on both Zoom and Facebook Live. Um, if you're seeing a rebroadcast of this, uh, this particular part of the gospel meeting and you have a prayer request, I invite you to please scan the QR code at the bottom that will take you to a prayer request form where you can submit your prayer request. Or if you want to put Christ on in baptism, uh, you can scan that QR code, let us know, and, and we'll make sure to, uh, to take care of you and get you taken care of. Um, also like our Facebook page when you get a chance and you won't miss a single notification of when we go live. And so um, we're through night two of our gospel meeting. Um, and so our next next uh, brother who will be bringing the message will be uh, Brother David Wright from the Jefferson Street Church of Christ uh, here in West Columbia. Um, I believe West Columbia is east of us, no west of us. Uh, yeah, West Columbia. Um, <laughs> so it, he is west of us uh, here in Missouri City. Uh, and I believe Needville is south of us uh, here in Missouri City. So we, we're catching them from all over. Uh, if you want to register uh, for this, this uh, next portion of the gospel meeting, please scan the QR code. If you already registered for this uh, gospel meeting, 
uh, this portion of the gospel meeting for Monday night. You're registered for the rest of the week. If you're catching this for the first time and you want to register, just scan the QR code there and you'll be registered. And also, again, like our Facebook page, and you'll be notified of all of our, uh, our going live activity. And so, again, we're looking forward to another great night uh, with Brother David Wright. And then uh, on Wednesday night, looking for another great night with Brother Graylin Freeman from the Quince Road Church of Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. So, um, everybody, we thank you for being a part of tonight's gospel meeting and we'll look forward to seeing y'all again at 7 p.m tomorrow uh brother rich did i miss any announcements no sir you did good all right all right i i, I said it just like you told it to me <laughs> yes indeed all right. Um, and so with that, we will have our closing song and our closing prayer. But first, I want to say, uh, Brother Brother Burrow, is there any final words that you wanted to, to leave us with this evening? Uh, yeah, we'll see you Sunday. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so Amen. so uh, I'm not sure if uh, Brother Herman has uh, contacted any of, of our brothers there, but... Uh, we're going to need some song leaders. <laughs> so uh, might have uh, is a, uh, what's that guy that, that got the, uh, down at the bottom of my screen there, scratching himself. Well, that's Richard. Yeah, Richard. Yeah. Curtis. <laughs> I, I really appreciate, uh, for, for sure, I appreciate the, uh, the speaker that you had last night, Brother Freeman, did a wonderful job. And, uh, I appreciate Agape and what you're doing. And uh, we're very thankful to be uh, be allowed to be a, a little part of whatever's going on there. We're, we're thankful for that. And you guys are doing a great job and really, really appreciate it. And uh, thankful for the people that tuned in. Uh, looking forward to hearing David uh, tomorrow night. Uh, it's a, a good man. And uh, so anyway, y'all are doing great. And I just give you, uh, give God the praise for, for you guys. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. Well, then for for you, our guests, we will uh, close out with our welcome song to our guests. Uh, we welcome you, our guests, to Agape Church of Christ. We're glad you're here. Please come again. We sing the praise of the Lord and the word of God is preached. We welcome you to Agape. We're glad you're here. Amen. Amen. Let us go before God's throne in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful again for another uh, wonderful meeting you've allowed us to be a part of. Father, we just thank you for all of the, the souls that are represented here. Father God, we thank you for all those who, who thought it not robbery to spend time with you, spend time in your word, Father God. And we thank you for just continuing to give us the blessings that you bestow upon us. Father, we pray that you'll be with us as we disperse from this virtual platform, but never from your sight. Continue to watch over us and keep us until we meet again. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and ask all things. Amen. 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 Outstanding message, Brother Burrow. <laughs>